Thank you so much to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present our very new project um, here on this conference. I'm sorry. Ah, it's here. I found one. Yeah. So this is the big one. Is the yes. Okay. Super. The, this, this one is the point. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right. So I um, I will slightly switch the topic from epidemiology to the um, new tools that could hopefully um, close this diagnostic gap in HCV, which was um, already uh, mentioned by. Um, by Milos earlier in his talk. So um, I would invite you to think about self-testing, whether that could be an additional approach that could um, uh, increase the coverage of the uh, um, hepatitis C testing services. Um, I would just like to start with a very brief um, introduction of what um, our organization is doing. So uh, FIND stands for Foundation for Innovative New Diagnostics. We are based in Geneva. Uh, we do have um, um, uh, four regional offices um, in um, South Africa, Kenya, Vietnam, and the big one in India. So um, as it's um, uh, evident from the, from the name of the foundation, we are heavily focusing on diagnostics and we are um, having programs on different infectious diseases um, with the special focus on, on diagnostics, on bringing diagnostics in resource-limited settings. Um, so find uh, goal is to help uh, to um, uh, overcome the uh, values of death when uh, it's, a, it's a product development partnership that helps uh, manufacturers and new diagnostic tools to uh, overcome the uh, um, three main values of death uh, that allies uh, on the way of the product uh, um, to the market. So it's um, just in, to help to ensure that the design of the product is correct and it fits for purpose in the countries that the, where the product will be used. Um, that there is the, uh, um, um, it, the, the um, uh, product satisfies regulatory and, and policy requirements and uh, also help um, to implement new, uh, new tools in the countries in the settings where these tools should be used. So about hepatitis, our hepatitis C program started in 2016, end of 2016. Um, it's supported by um, UNITAID, uh, and then it has four uh, main parts. Um, um, one part is to um, bring the new tools, new diagnostic tools uh, for hepatitis C in the market, so help manufacturers to develop right tools and evaluate them in the, in the right settings and bring them to the market. Uh, second one is to uh, run um, uh, different studies in countries to show the efficiency and the cost effectiveness of hepatitis C diagnostics. Uh, we also do market forecasting and um, uh, um, obviously all the evidence that are uh, obtained through our project are shared with the national and international stakeholders in order to um, provide the basis for the future guidance. So out of 70, uh, more than 70 millions living with hepatitis C, we still have less than 20% of them diagnosed and aware of their infection. So we are still uh, far from reaching 2030 WHO targets. And um, diagnostics is one of the bottlenecks uh, um, on this route. Um, so the uh, 2017 guidelines recommend the focus screening for, uh, screening for um, individuals at high risk for hepatitis C. So among others, the, the, those are um, intravenous drug users, uh, MSM prisoners, HIV infected and other population. Um, apart from that, um, uh, WHO also recommends general population screening for um, uh, settings with a, a high prevalence of HCV infection, more than 5%, and also birth cohort testing. So the guidance is clear, its um, implementation is still lagging behind. Um, so what could uh, drive the, uh, what could increase the efficiency of the testing and what could expand the testing coverage? Um, WHO outlines uh, um, several points, those I, I have taken from the 2018 update. Uh, but most importantly, these are uh, decentralized testing and treatment services 
and then also community engagement and peer support to promote access um, to, to services, specifically in uh, vulnerable populations. So the screening for hepatitis C can be done and in, in, in largely done in centralized settings by um, uh, ELISA essay or chemin luminescent essays, but also can be easily done in decentralized settings as we do have a lot of um, uh, uh, rapid diagnostic tests that can be performed either from blood or um, from oral fluid specimens. So they, those are easy and uh, fast to perform usually um, you would have the result in 15-20 minutes. Uh, it, uh, you, the, uh, no special training is needed to perform those tests and no special equipment. So um, that's really a paramount to, tool to um, decentralize the uh, testing services and provide access to uh, wider populations. Uh, so we do have um, three assays now pre-qualified by WHO. Uh, it's a quality assurance stamp that uh, um, uh, shows that the, the products are of quite high performance and high quality. We have uh, several tests in the WHO pre-qualification pipeline, so more to come. Um, apart from that, I just want to uh, um, show you a snapshot of our recent study of 13 different RDTs um, on more than 600 frozen plasma specimens um, from three countries. Uh, out, and they, you can just have an um, impression here that the majority of these 13 um, um, RDTs included in the study show a very good performance. It's over above 98% uh, sensitivity, above 98% specificity. So we do have these tools um, available for um, easy to use and, and uh, that can be used um, in decentralized settings. Can we go even lower in the, in the implementation? Can we um, improve the access by uh, uh, modifying these tools for self-testing. So self-testing uh, would be the process where the person is collecting uh, his own specimen and then performs, conducts the testing by himself and interprets the result by himself. Um, uh, self-testing has been widely used in um, HIV, so it showed a significant increase in uptake of HIV testing services. There are numerous studies has been conducted so, uh, at the moment for HIV in HIV field to show um, the effectiveness of the HIV self-testing, um, and then so one can assume that similarly it can increase the uptake of the HCV testing services. It's very important to remember that self-testing is never uh, meant to replace other testing modalities. This is an additional approach. Um, and should never be used as, a, as the replacement of the um, professional, of the provider um, delivered testing. It's also not a definitive test, but this is for HIV, for HCV, um, none of the serology testing is definitive anyway, so we would need to confirm that using the um, uh, varemia test. But that's important to know, to remember. So the um, just to uh, remind the um, uh, WHO 2016 guidelines on HIV um, testing that recommended HC HIV self-testing as an additional approach based on, uh, on several um, RCT, several studies that show that self-introduction of the self-testing increase uptake, um, uh, especially in, in key populations increased frequency of the testing uh, among men who have sex with men and also increase, uh, did not in, importantly did not increase risk behavior so that it didn't lead to um, uh, decreased frequency of, uh, of the um, STI testing, provider delivered STI testing and it also didn't um, uh, increase any social harm. Uh, and based of this, on this data, WHO recommended self-testing in, for HIV as an additional approach. There are a number of tests now existing for self-testing in HIV. Um, two of them has been pre-qualified um, by WHO, and uh, um, so they are um, uh, high quality uh, and, and very easy to use. Um, there are different um, delivery, service delivery, uh, there are different distribution models uh, that are uh, being piloted right now. Um, so they uh, vary from the unassisted self-testing, meaning that the person would purchase the test and uh, rely on the instructions for use um, and performing uh, the test. 
pretty much it's done now with the pregnancy tests. Um, but it's also uh, can be implemented as a direct, uh, directly assisted self-testing, meaning that uh, the person um, would receive the test through the um, programs, for example, in the harm reduction site or in the prep clinic, and, or in a community-based organization, and will be explained how to use the test, or will be assisted in, in testing. Um, and then uh, there are uh, several distribution models somewhere in between, where um, uh, there is an application, or there is the um, uh, video support uh, uh, for the um, to, to how to conduct the self-test and what to do in case of positive um, uh, uh, results. So this is um, in HIV. It's pretty much down the road. So. We, what are the, to what extent this um, vast experience that is accumulated in HIV right now is um, relevant to HCV? So there are important similarities in HIV and HCV, but also important differences. So obviously similarities is common transmission groups, overlapping um, uh, high-risk populations, overlapping challenges in, 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 get, in reach to this um, high-risk population. Um, important level of stigmatization and um, also uh, same uh, test providers, same, same um, the manufacturers of the test and the screening technology, so the tests are pretty similar. The differences are, however, then, well, the, on the positive part, the HCV is curable, uh, but on the negative part, the, there is no donor funding for HCV, so um, the person has to pay for the, in many countries, has to pay out of the pocket for testing and treatment. Um, and that also um, uh, make the, compli uh, complicates the um, access to the confirmatory testing, of course, and linkage to care. Um, and also very important for, um, in, from the self-testing perspective is that the awareness and the knowledge about HCV, uh, hepatitis C infection, is much less than it is for HIV infection. So what is the current status of the HCV self-testing? There is not much data available, which is why the, um, uh, the latest WHO guidelines uh, couldn't make any recommendation regarding self-testing. It did outline that it's uh, a potential approach that um, so the approach has a great potential to increase the coverage, but there is no data to recommend it so far. Um, there are limited data in, in the published in the peer-reviewed journals now. There are um, two papers that one, um, uh, qualitative, results of the qualitative research in um, drug users in, in, in the UK, um, that also brought some level of acceptability and some level of concerns around HCV self-testing, and another paper that is focusing on the performance of the um, um, ORA-QUIC uh, um, uh, rapid test for HCV performed from oral fluids when used as a self-test. That is a very early study where basically the research group has adopted the instructions for use um, to, to, to make the, the test, to adapt the test for self-testing. But that is basically it. Um, so there is also, we do not have any um, quality assured HCV self-test on the market, so we can't really pilot any distribution models. We, do, we are very much upstream as compared to the HIV. So what do we need? Despite the fact that we have such an extensive data set on feasibility and acceptability of the HIV self-testing, we still need um, uh, um, obtained data in a hepatitis C relevant context. So we do need to undertake some key studies to see um, the feasibility of this approach um, in um, Hep C relevant settings. So in this year, we have started a, um, a very close collaboration. In, in a very close collaboration with WHO, we started a pilot project to assess the feasibility of the self-testing in um, different countries. So the objective um, is to um, uh, to learn people's opinions about self-testing and also to see how people have performed the test and how usable it is. Is it easy enough to use um, as a self-test? So we, we are uh, conducting study in different countries. We have completed the study in Egypt where we focused on general population and uh, were um, offering the self-testing option to um, people attending district hospital in Mansoura region. Uh, we do have an ongoing study in China um, with a community-based organization um, and in collaboration with Guangdong uh, Regional Hospital for STIs. 
um, where we focus on MSM population and soon we'll be including um, a drug user population. Um, we are preparing three more studies. Um, importantly, the, I, I would like to focus for the, uh, on the one in Georgia where we are going to expand a qualitative um, component, so we are going to implement the one-to-one -one, uh, in-depth interviews to understand uh, what are the um, main issues and challenges around uh, um, HCV self-testing. Um, so in all these studies, we are using the Orasure rapid diagnostic test adapted by the manufacturer for self-testing. So the instructions for use has been prepared by the manufacturer and the test has been packaged for self-test use by the manufacturer. So we have completed the study in Egypt. I just wanted to share some um, results of, that, of this study. So we have recruited um, adults uh, who provided informed consent and importantly who had unknown um, HCV serology status. So they won't be biased by their previous knowledge of their serology status. Um, so we, uh, we also did not include uh, anybody with previous experience with self-testing, so not to bias usability data. Uh, yeah, and as I told, the, the HCV status should have been unknown. All right, so the, uh, basically the study design was that all hospital attendees were offered the option uh, to participate in the study and to try out the self-testing. Those who agreed were explained uh, uh, what the study is about and then um, were provided in-person demonstration how to use the self-test. That means the study staff was showing uh, the participants how to use the test. And then um, after, after that, and after the person has uh, had the possibility to ask all the questions, uh, the person was provided a private space where um, he or she could uh, uh, perform the self-test uh, while observed by one of the, silently observed by one of the study um, staff. So the study staff observed the self-testing procedure and noted all the mistakes uh, that, and difficulties that the person faced. Um, in, in case where um, the person was um, uh, demanded assistance and couldn't proceed with the testing, the assistance was provided and that was also noted. And after the testing was conducted, we have asked uh, several questions, a very short questionnaire uh, was administered to all the participants to understand what, what is their feedback on the self-testing. Finally, we also performed the, the, um, the um, professional use or a quick um, HCV test, uh, and that was performed by the professional test operator and to measure the um, concordance of the uh, self-reported results and the results uh, obtained by the uh, professional health healthcare worker. So we did enroll 116 participants. Uh, um, it's important on this slide to note that um, a, a, a good, a significant part, almost 15% were illiterate, so they couldn't read, and then only 22% had a college or, or higher education. Um, so also important that about 25% had an HCV positive uh, member, household member, so the level of awareness in this, in, in Egypt population is obviously very high. All right, and then also the, okay acceptability, um, so when they were asked would they uh, use the HCV self-test if it was available, more than 95% said yes, they would use the test. When we looked at the usability, so the uh, percentage of the people who made the mistakes at every step of the self-testing, you can see that the numbers are very um, high, so the usability is very high. Only so, a small number of people made some uh, mistakes uh, in testing. Only one person couldn't complete the testing. And only 12% of people has uh, requested an assistance of the study staff to complete the testing. Um, so the usability data are very optimistic. So when we looked at the agreement, so the agreement of the results reported by the participant and the results that the staff member observed, so we saw that there is quite some important um, uh, level of disagreement, so only 86% 86, 86 of agreement, um, meaning that uh, some people um, uh, have report that had interpreted the results incorrectly. So they thought it was positive when it was negative and vice versa, so that was not, um, that was the, the, the principal difficulty. And similarly, um, that also explains the, the discrepancies between the uh, participant reported results and the um, uh, results of the second test. 
So when we asked people how, what do they think about the self-test, so absolute majority found it very easy to perform. Um, about a half of the people considered self-testing accurate and would rely on the results. Um, and uh, importantly, more than 90% would recommend the uh, uh, test to family and friends and would take the test home to family uh, to offer that to their family and their friends if it was available. And uh, more than 96% would use the self-test uh, uh, again if it was available. So the acceptability is, is very, very high. Um, so majority of the people would use the test by themselves at home um, and then in case of positive results also absolute majority of the people would um, contact health facility. Um, again that was in Egypt with a very strong national policies on hepatitis C so 67% um, of the people knew that HCV can be cured or the awareness of the disease was very very high as well. So. Briefly, this, to summarize, we did observe a very high acceptability of the self-testing in Egypt. Um, uh, despite of the uh, significant number of the illiterate participants, the usability was high. So that is also uh, thanks to the um, pictorial instructions uh, that were pretty clear. Um, and then uh, we did observe the difficulties with interpretation of the test results and we, we saw that it's, um, people need to be explained more uh, what is negative and what is invalid and what is um, a positive result. So I just want to finish with, some, with bringing some of the discussion points. So what is the uh, opportunities brought by uh, HCV self-testing? So it could certainly um, help to overcome stigmatization could reach the population that are hard to reach with the traditional um, service delivery models. Um, it can be an additional tool that increases the, 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 the efficiency of screening. So it might be a tool that would promote people to test themselves more frequently. And I'm sure there are other opportunities that I, I would like to hear from you if you can think of any of them. And then on the other side, barriers. So there is a, a, a great barrier is a lack of awareness and knowledge about HCV infection. That also in some countries that can't be really a test that could be sold in pharmacies simply because people do not know enough about um, hepatitis C, not as much as they do know f about HIV, for example. Um, so there is also lack of donor funding and uh, so meaning people would have to pay for the testing and they would have to pay for the confirmatory testing afterwards in case of the positive results and this test is, is uh, um, the cost of this test is, is uh, could be prohibitive in, in many countries. Um, uh, so that also linked to the next barrier which is a poor linkage to a confirmatory varimia test also because of the cost but also because of the um, uh, accessibility because this test is often um, available only in big um, centers, uh, not in rural settings, for example. There are other barriers. Again, I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Um, so in, finally, which population might benefit from the self-testing? That's also is just a starting point for the discussion. Um, basically, more or less my thoughts put on, on, on the slide, and I would like to hear more uh, from your country perspective, or your program perspective, whether you see any additional value in, in, in introducing the self-testing as an additional approach. But what we have thought about is that it could be similar to HIV, it could uh, be um, implemented to um, uh, increase the, to, to um, test to distribute through the injection partners of, the, of those drug users that are engaged in harm reduction networks. So basically to give them, to explain them how to, those that are engaged in, the, in harm reduction network, how to use the test and ask them to take them to, the, to their communities, to their friends and ask them, uh, show them how to use the test and ask them to use the test. Similarly, partners of MSM engaged in, in care, um, especially HIV positive, partners of HIV positive, MSM engaged in HIV clinics could be another option. Um, so then um, high risk population not engaged in care could benefit from that by via peer assisted testing, meaning that um, people that are um, the, uh, the peers that are not nurses or not uh, te qualified testers could distribute that test door to door or come to the communities and assist people in performing um, the self-test. So, uh, then the, 
also it might general population might also benefit from that, especially in countries that are um, actively pursuing um, elimination with a very strong elimination policies. Again, I would like to hear more your thoughts on, on where um, the self-testing could make a difference. And with that, I would like to thank you uh, for your attention and I'm looking forward for the discussion. And lastly, I just wanted to mention that uh, we, uh, we are conducting uh, uh, lots of studies and lots of collaborations with the uh, 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 centers in countries that have access to the, uh, especially that have access to key populations. So if you are interested, please do not hesitate to find me and uh, I'm uh, happy to discuss further. Thank you so much.